I'm so stoked. This is going to be great. Uh -huh. Okay, should I be outside? You see my arm? Not 100% predictable. They might stay in and they might all come out. I don't know what's going to happen until I open it. Okay. okay, let's see what happens here.
There's not, not, they didn't have too many bees. I think the, the hive is failing because the brood pattern is real spotty. You know the brood pattern? Is it really spotty here? So I think the hive is failing. The queen is failing. It's not a really good queen. So they still got bees in there though, but yeah, you can see. The comb looks like. And you can see the larvae in there, the white stuff. Can you see it? Yes. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. And then as you can see, some of it is being capped here. But the the pattern is not solid, you know what I mean? It's spotty. Here's another one. This is the other half of the comb, yeah, like that. Wow. See how spotty the pattern is? Sure. It's like somebody shotgunned it, and that's happens when, when the queen is failing, not laying enough eggs. So eventually what they're going to probably do is supersede this queen, make another one. Time gets in there, like about three months later, they'll supersede the queen. Once the once it starts laying and they got larvae developing and then and, and the bees hatching, then they'll supersede the queen and then at that time the supersedure will take over the hive, kill the old queen and take over the hive and then do we propagate again. But you see over here get all these brown combs over here? You see the brown combs up there? Mm -hmm. At one time there was a hive in here. And and then and you see the this this here the wood is eaten up here like this? See how the wood is scalloped out? Yes. The hive was eaten out, maybe died, and the wax moth developed. And here, over here, you can see the, here's the wax moth, cocoon. You see it here on the wood? Can you see this yeah. white stuff? You see this here. white stuff here? Okay. That's the wax moth cocoon. And uh, this like, like small, well, they're about probably what, inch or so? And, and uh, in here, I don't know, they don't have any more, I think. Let's see, I don't think there's any more live ones in here. They probably all died already. Or hatched out, whatever was going to hatch out. But they make these cocoons like this. And then, before the larvae goes and pupates, it, it gouges the, uh, the wood like this. Gouges the wood out. So all of these gouges at one time used to be wax moth cocoon. Yeah, that hatched out. Some of these didn't hatch here. You know, like they died for some reason. And what happened was that the original hive, which is on here, right? And you can see how it was stuck up there, the hives like that, the combs. Yes. The wax moth came and ate all of that. The moth larvae goes in there and, and, and eats the, the pollen and, and the casings and whatnot that's in the, and it literally the combs up. But because of the smell of the wax is impregnated on the wood like this, It'll attract another hive in here. That's why. Yeah, that's why you get another one. So this here is another hive here. This is a new new hive that was in there. See, there's no wax moth in here yet. Otherwise, you'll be you see all the cobwebs and the, you know the silk tunneling and everything that be on here. But there's nothing in here yet. All you can see is that the queen is failing. This existing queen is failing. So like a swarm came late in the year, a few weeks ago. And then the hive was already failing. Usually when the swarm comes, it's the old queen that leaves. So this old queen, when he left the hive, was already a failing queen. What's the lifespan of a queen? Yeah, two to four years, okay. I would think. But more than anything, you know, when it goes out to mate, it tend to turn its drones. Whatever sperm it has is to last its lifetime. But what happens is that after about a year and a half, two years, depending on how much egg it lays, the amount of sperm it has saved up or, or you know, retained when it made it, that thing gets get used up and then, then, then it starts laying unfertilized eggs which then develops into male bees, drones. Okay? At that time also as the queen fails, the pheromone gets less and less on the queen. So that, that goes around, rubs off on the hive, you know, on the bees in the hive. And then when they, they sense that, then some of the bees become uninhibited and they start, they know it's like a signal to that's a failing queen and then they then produce other uh, queens to supersede it using one of the, the new larvae that's probably 24 hours to 30 hours old. After about 30 hours, if they don't make it into a queen, then the food changes, huh? the food source to that larvae 
and then it then develops into a worker worker bee and so all these, these are worker bees up here is that correct yeah those are all workers those are all females unmated females and they come out from these cells over here okay they, they see, these these are the worker cells I don't see any drones on here drone cells usually the drone cells look like you know they kind of pop out like a bullet yeah Yeah, I don't see any drones here. And then here, in here, the shiny stuff you see around here is the nectar storage. So they got nectar storage and then there's kind of like a few empty cells in between that. And then below that comes the place where the, the brood is developing. Watch out now. So oh, I'm going to take the rest of the bee out and then I can seal them up. But that's what happened is this one here, the hive died, the original hive died, the wax moth moved in, chewed up all of the combs and everything. And then the new one just came in and started making house in the original location where the other one was. So unless we seal it good from the inside, another one will come back in here again. Come spring. So we we want to seal the outside where they're actually entering? Yeah, you want to seal okay. the inside too. I use that foam expanding stuff. No, no, I'm going to put that in. Oh, okay. You got yeah. Just like that. All yeah, right. I'm going to just stuff it down all the way as far down as I can on the bottom. Okay, I see. And then they'll keep them from coming in. Keeps the cockroaches out and the, the rats out and the <laughs> centipedes out and all the other vermin you get around here. <laughs> like that. That's very good. <laughs> Not to insulate the house, but to keep the bugs out. Yeah. That, like that, right? This is on top of that, like that. Like that, right? Oops, this was this one, no, this way. This way, yeah. Just like that. It was like that, and then the other piece here. And then on top of this column, right? On top of that column was another one, which was. This was on top of this was the out, another comb on top of that, which was the outside comb. So there was like one, two, there are three of these, I think. So what about honey? No, the only honey is in here is what you see in the comb, I see. which is what's up in here. Let me zoom in on. It. But it's not honey yet. So it's just nectar that hasn't been sealed. It's high in moisture content. They haven't processed. What's happening, I think this hive is failing, so there's not enough bees to process it. They're just bringing the, the nectar back. But the queen is not laying enough eggs here. So they don't need as many nurse bees to take care of the, the, the brood that's developing. So a lot of the bees going out is bringing nectar back. That's why there's the high storage of nectar here. So when the hive starts failing, sometimes, you know, the hive all of a sudden produces a lot of honey. It's because there's not enough brood developing. So just because there's lots of honey in the hive doesn't mean it's a thriving hive. It could sure. be a failing hive. I see. Yeah. Okay. So how many bees do you think were in this hive? This one? Hive? Uh, not very many. A couple thousand maybe. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, you can the, see the on that one. The population is dwindling. Population is dwindling. Yeah, because when you look in here. Right, you can, I don't know, let me see. I can see. See, when you look in here, right? When you look in here, as many empty combs as the as the empty combs they are over here, the eggs is only coming down over here. There's eggs down here is all empty. All this is empty. Mm -hmm. In other words, the queen all area and more and more open cells. In other words, unless they start making a new queen out of this soon, this hive is gonna fail. And what happens when it fails? Do they just take off? No, they'll keep trying. The queen dies, and then they won't. Then, then the queen dies, and then the the worker bees become you know without the queen, they 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 some of them become laying workers, some of them begin laying eggs inside the cells, mm. but they, because they unmated, the the bee the the eggs will develop into male bees, drone bees, not another worker. 
So then, because the, the drones cannot get honey and make wax and all that stuff, except eat and make with another virgin, the, doing the, the population will dwindle off until every one of them dies. And then the wax moth, by that time, will move in to uh, eat up all of this stuff. Yeah, if the rats can not get it, then the wax moth and the cockroaches and all that will come in and eat it. I see. Yeah. But right now you can see that the eggs is right around where the brood area is right here. And being that it's spotted like this, you know, the queen isn't laying in every one of those holes, which is supposed to, it's supposed to lay maybe 1,000, 1,200 eggs a day. Wow. But this one's probably doing only maybe a couple hundred in a day or two. It's not, it's not going yet. It's not going well. Yeah, so you take this hive and you put it in a box, this one will fail. It will fail in the box. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's just like a losing proposition to put it in. It's going to fail. So you have to put it in. And, and put a new queen right away, so the queen will start laying before the, all the adult bees die off. Otherwise, there won't be anything to take care of the larvae when the new queen lays. I so see. you have to not only feed it, you have to also put a new queen in this one. Yeah. You can put the combs in, so mm -hmm. all of these will, will, will still hatch. Sure. But you need a new queen to lay plenty of eggs, and then you need to feed it, because there's not enough bees to take care of, take care of the larvae. See, so because they gotta go out and get food, so they don't have to go and get food. You feed it, so the bees that normally would go out and get the nectar and everything will stay in to take care of that thing. I see. The duties will change back to being nursed again. I see. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting. Look at, here, here, this, look at this here. This is a bee that's coming out now. It's hatching. Can you see? That little one with the head sticking out. There's a bee that's hatching. <laughs> you can actually see a bee hatching. And if you look on the edge here, you can see the larvae and the, how the larvae is situated in the, the combs. Can you see half of it, how half of the comb is on one side, half of it on the other side? Yes. Yeah. All the work could be develops horizontal. All the work in the drones develop horizontally in the combs. But the queen develops hanging down face down. And if you were to take that queen larvae as it's developing, and even if you have it, say, take it out and you put it on some place and put the comb sideways like this for three, four hours, just that being on its side would cause that queen to develop with some kind of abnormality. Hmm. So you have to always have the It has cells to be vertical. Vertical. Mm -hmm. You can't leave it like that and then go do something two, three hours and come back and then put the comb back in the correct orientation expect the queen to develop properly yeah it, that could damage the queen also wow yeah okay i'm gonna go take the rest of the bees out before we get stung